Karthaj Chakravarti, Director Eddie Kirk, for may ask you to make a couple of presentations. Yeah. Uh, can you have my presentation is there. Can I have the But it's trying to make the directors not fall asleep. <laughs> for institutional, a lot of things have, a lot of ideas have come. It's, uh, it's an attempt to make the institutional heads make commitments on the table. <laughs> As you can look, make them look. So, uh, thank you. Uh, IIT Kharagpur, uh, as you know, has a department of architecture and then we also have departments on engineering, design, manufacturing, school of infrastructure design. We are working there. Our team will discuss with you all the creative aspects in a separate presentation. <coughs> so I will just uh, uh, share with you the reasons why I came to this. And I was very happy to hear, because I'm a computer scientist, I was just sitting to hear, so I was very happy to hear the name of Herb Simon twice, uh, being talked about here. So my uh, pre presentation to you is actually the reasons why I came to learn and what I asked, what I have come to learn on, so that we can set up our things here. So it's not me saying something, these are all questions to you questions to the community which I expect to learn something from. So my overall aims were threefold. We wanted to understand what, what is it that will help bridge this large canvas that all of us are calling design and we are hearing it all the time uh, that covers generic to specific abstractions to concrete and we are all talking about a confluence of concepts, themes, domains that nurtures both perfection and completeness. We are talking about novelty and usefulness. We are talking about viability. We are talking about aesthetics. So is, is, what is it? What is it that will bridge this? What is that next? So we, we are talking about that technology artists are separate, but in ancient times they were not. They were all, all the same. They were both scientists as well as artists. So we, wanted, we want to create a pedagogy for the scholastic and academic programs that nurtures this confluence and with adequate nourishments from the art, science, and engineering principles. And thirdly, exactly what Dr. Sam Petroda said, we want to determine what is that next generation technology-based platform for students. What is that platform? Because that is that platform is something we want to develop. What is that platform that all of you think is relevant, important for us to develop? So in order to do that, I, according to me, according to whatever I understand, there are some fundamental challenges or limitations of the current methods. And, and whatever I have been hearing, I, my knowledge is very weak. But still I want to know, are there some fundamental abstractions that cover most of these concepts? You know, we are talking about from service to everything else. What are, are there any fundamental abstractions? If, if so, what are they? How do we embed creativity within a grammar? Softness within the rigor, that's what we are asking. How do we analyze it syntactically? How do we define the semantics? These are the issues which are very fundamental to create that next generation of uh, uh, pedagogy. How, in what, 
language do we express design intent or do we say design intent doesn't exist it's just something that comes out of my head and then we have an implementation how do we measure that this implementation is good we are talking about this goodness and and we have this criteria we have discussed that quantitative criteria don't always work we have multiple views and we have this elusive eureka then we are talking about so many domains we are hearing people with so many domains how do we how do we compile them what do we provide to that next generation you know this whole set of knowledge that we heard today how do we provide it to that next generation designer how do we do that that is the question we are talking about there are silos we need to bridge silos the question is how do we break that barrier is it going to break very slowly in the next 100 years or is there a mechanism to just break it and then this co concept of design knowledge how do we provide very very rapid access to divine design knowledge so these these are according to me some fundamental limitations i don't have a single diagram so according to me uh, no no i don't need a diagram i need the solution to whatever we have been discussing today i need to know how to go ahead that's what i don't need to i don't know i'm i'm very excited but i still don't know the solution you know i'll go back knowing nothing very excited then go back zero so i need to know what is that abstraction language for design what is it what is it that combines diagrams text formally grammar recursion ensembles layerings multiple views what is it secondly i want to know what are the analytical foundations of any design whether you are designing a government all of you must have heard of stafford beer who tried to design a new government and as amarnath ji pointed out obviously the person who called him to design the government was shot dead by a dictator so, <laughs> so <laughs> you met the dictator <laughs> so but then i think on all aspects of design whether it's service whether it's a uh, government whether it's a product whether it's anything there are some very very fundamental concepts that transcends everything that amends itself to analysis and that is embedding that is the concept of flow that is the concept of connection the concept of refinement the concept of measures the concept of proportions all of them cut across everything so for example when you have flows then you talk about reachability this reachability is from visual reachability to government reaching people to everything and i believe that there is there is that elusive science and that i think for the scientists and the engineers it will lead to a new mechanism we need new books we need new books which cover you know we have been hearing people talk about engineering design art design creative design and we have been seeing fundamental principles across them we need books we need new course material literature that is polythematic in nature while maintaining the core of design people have talked about case studies knowledge and everything and also talked about skill development so we need to we need from all of you what are the foundations of this pedagogy because if we, if you know i am a very hardcore engineer and i want to design the course called design so i i really want to know within the next few months whether i'll be able to do it or not so and the other thing i need is a next generation tool what is that tool for the designer which builds in geometry which shows them the abstract flow of government policy going down to people or money going down or air circulation going through all of them will have a fundamental mechanism and therefore there needs to be a fundamental tool and that tool must have a mechanism for rapid design creation refinement and evaluation must then it must be knowledge intensive with analytical simulation visualization data mining with this huge data mining capability we should be able to you know the proportions which amarnath showed or some mathematical sequences that come up 
people have discovered it today with tools they can come out people can simply analyze diagrams and find out the geometry they should be able to do but these tools obviously there will be huge you know you have autocad you have a design for chemical plants you have other designs this tool should sit on top of all of them and interoperate this is the tool i believe we need at the highest level of design and we need a large body of knowledge of design to be systematically collated in a suitable manner for rapid association based retrieval without this next generation tool we are again going to spend hours on end you know trying to refine very simple simple things we are not going to create that new generation which says that science and art of design are not different we know both of them we, we are going to create a people who are like us only and i don't think we don't wa i don't think we want to do that sorry and thank you <laughs> So, uh, so I, I want that I want that output to take back. That's yeah. why I'm sitting here awake. She's angry with me. I'm checking emails. I can answer an exam. I've heard everything. <laughs> no, so far, say so you get a D school right away. That's a design school, and everybody here around the table ought to be offering the su their support to ID curricula setting up with design school. Obviously, they need one, so the design line is fast flowing. And since the rest of the ID curricula team has got a flight to catch bad design for a timetable today. I'm going to have to let them make their presentations. So Joyce Sain and his team. But this is not an ID curriculum now, please. So just make it because I have a flight to catch after this. Then we'll again open up the house for some more people to speak who've not had a chance to speak before we start the next series of formal presentations. So um mm, I think uh, let's set the slide zone. A very good afternoon. I think uh, it's between the presentation and catching a flight. You know, so uh, that's one issue. The other issue is here is a presentation of eight minutes where we are punching in three of us I, Shoikot, and Hoimonte. So that's a very tough thing to do. I think Partho or PPC made everything straight. It's basically, uh, I like to refer to a story. This is like a month back in IIT Kharagpur when Professor Deshai. Sharma and uh, PPC, they were all in a table and they were talking about a possibility of a language of design. And they were arguing and they were converging. So I was in the table. So we got inspired. So, and I think from there, I had a talk with PPC who had been to Varanasi with Professor Sangal. And uh, we were exposed to Varanasi, all its you know, variety. And then I sat with our team, that's Hoimunti and uh, Shoikot. And here is uh, an arrogance. You know, we have tried to work out a language for design. Yep. Okay. So uh, uh, we just wanted to ask some questions. I mean, what is design? So we thought design is like a holistic streamline. It assimilates, it consolidates. It's, uh, it's a cyclic flow which combines a lot of things over time, uh, like history and civilization, language. I think all that came in all the presentations that precedes us. So given this premise, uh, we had a uh, very interesting the next, uh, uh, set up. We proposed a diagram and we asked some basic question. Is there a language of design? Uh, where is that language? Is it there at the deeper layer or is it at the surface? Uh, if there is a deeper layer, what is the deepness? Is there something which can be done from the ground to connect the deeper layer? And are there things in between which sort of optimizes? So given this premise, we uh, like to propose a few things which could be of interest. These are like teaser diagrams. So let, let's go on to some of the cases next. Uh, so here are some icons to build forms to technology which comes from different layers of history. The, the basic questions are, are there points of convergence or 
is it all divergent? There is no common language of design. So let's have a look at them. On the top, we have, uh, you know, there are different products of history, of culture, of religion. You know. uh, the one on the left comes from something like 2,300 years back. Then we have uh, the symbols coming from, say, 2,000 to 1,800 years back. And then we have a very recent uh, diagram. They are not related, you know, they are like different things altogether. But when you look deep into it, you see some kind of a cycle, you know, you see a, a circle with like four quadrants and then a four poles and four sides and we see some kind of an iteration. Like the Buddhist cycle or the Christian cycle and the Carnot cycle, they're all based on temperature, like the seasonal temperature, the iteration of the Easter and the moving in of the isothermals and the adiabatic. You know, that's very interesting. And when we look at patterns, like uh, when we create a city like Oroville, we get a spiral. And the same spiral becomes a galaxy at a very large scale, you know. And that same spiral <laughs> becomes an agent of destruction when it becomes a cyclone. So is there a language in nature which sort of cuts through uh, a design of a city, the creation of a natural form as vast as a galaxy, or uh, a very moving dynamic form like a cyclone? You know, these are like questions which you're trying to ask next. So from topology, we move on to some built space, you know. So on the one hand, we have a footprint of a temple, which is a mandala, and then we have the char bar, you know, the four square, which is the Taj Mahal, and th then we have the St. Peter's, the basilica. When we, look on, when we look at all these footprints, there's a very interesting thing. All of them, they have a quadrangle, you know, they have a four square, and they're all based on a certain assumption, which is, uh, like in the Indian case, it's from the Vedas. In the case of Taj Mahal, it's from Judaism, the Garden of Eden, and in the Christian church, it's from the, you know, from the Kirk, which means the circle, it's going on and on. So these are very, very interesting things which comes from the understanding of built spaces and flows. Uh, next, when you look at a Buddhist church and a Gothic cathedral, we see a striking similarity. You know, we have the nave, we have the ale, we have the apse, you know, that semicircular thing. I mean, they're, they, they're not related in an across space, space and time. They're in two different parts of the world. But how come, like, two different groups of people in two different parts of the world came to a certain kind of a common you know, solution. If they're related, uh, then they liked each other. If they're not related, then they have a common language of design. So it's either way. Next. So we also have very interesting thing like textures. You know, we, we had a very interesting you know, talk about textures and patterns. So there's a texture which comes from the Kashmiri carpet, the Persian carpets. There's a texture in the city planning, you know, as old as Mohenjo Daro, which is right on the top middle, to say the garden city beautiful design, which was done in Chicago in uh, 1893. You know. So the same pattern flows through the city forms. And then we have textures which are used in computer algorithm. You know. Charles Babbage used that you know, to, you know, he followed the room and walked on the iterations, you know, the going down and the coming up of the needle. So the texture runs between the weaving which is a uh, loom and then to a city and finally computer algorithm. So these are very interesting questions we can raise. So given this, uh, we have just gone a little ahead and, uh, and we wanted to have a very interesting look at a city and we are largely exposed to that in our visit to IIT BHU just a week back and we decided to have an exploration of the city. It's over to Hoimanti. She'll share a few important things on what, what could be done from sacred geometry to the footprint of the city itself. Yes. Hello. Yeah. Uh, the history of Varanasi uh, speaks basically of a continuous process of city development where every single activity has left its mark in the process of design. Now, here the Gadesian philosophy of uh, place, folk and work have got a new dimension by the grafting of a uh, cosmic phenomena on a terrestrial plane. Like if we see the profile, the crescent that is formed, the sacred crescent that is formed, probably reminds us of a pattern which is formed of the twelve Vaditya's or the twelve sun. The, but this is not an isolated phenomena probably we see the same thing being repeated from Judea to Babylon as we can see here the sacred uh, crescent being marked there also. Next please. Uh, if we look at the 
position of Varanasi with respect to the Indian subcontinent, what we see that it has got a very special location is the uh, alignment, the linear alignment, uh, the cyclical alignment, the sacred pattern, the sacred geometry that is the swastika pattern that there is probably accounts for these uh, over 3000 years of global assimilation and the flow that has happened here, especially at the Ghats. Next please. Now, uh, the story of the Ghats. Human beings have a natural tendency to get attracted to, the water, to large water bodies. Now here in the cards we see a very distinct pattern. We see a transformation. Now this transformation probably is the result of not uh, the uh, activities of a few religious minded people or the Tirthankaras, but the interaction of the general people with the water body, with the cards. And it's a very unique example where probably the daily activity of the people have got beautifully accommodated in the sacred geometry of the cards. Next, please. Uh, here we see another very important thing where we move, uh, we see the example of the modulation of the build forms. Now, Varanasi is a city which probably provides a setting for individual, uh, secluded, isolated uh, spiritual experience to a holistic and mass spiritual experience. Well, probably uh, which takes the shape of some kind of a socio cultural festival. This reminds us of some kind of a design approach where probably we move from part to the whole but where the part also is a whole. Next please. Now, Paranasi is a city probably which tells us, which teaches us that there is a distinct uh, design language which is a part of a larger system. Now I will hand over the uh, mic to my colleague Professor Shoykot Paul who will be elaborating more on the system approach of design. So, in the earlier slides, we have seen some kind of a pattern which is replicated at spatial and temporal scale. Now, if we see, uh, there are uh, deeper fractalizations which is embedded in beehives or it is embedded in uh, Buckminster Fuller's dome, uh, in which each uh, unit in, its, uh, uh, in this ensemble is a whole, uh, but uh, I mean, when it is assembled together, uh, it uh, there is an orchestration in the design. So, uh, I mean, the concept of cybernetics and beyond, that is a state of, uh, uh, I mean, a higher state is achieved when we uh, see the design at a holistic level. So, uh, those four levels that we have been trying to uh, talk about in the earlier slides are embedded in all the different designs that we see. I mean, if we scale up the universal design approach, we see the universal uh, design pyramid, I mean, pyramid of inclusion, we see at the bottom level, we have the universal design and as we go uh, to the top, there is, uh, I mean, the level of uh, uh, your, uh, the uh, in inclusion is increased uh, to the highest level of personal assistance, which is uh, implemented in some of the designs, uh, design examples that are elaborated here. Now, uh, this, uh, the social systems that are the cities uh, s uh, can be again, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, shown in the Pollyanni's epistemological investigation uh, knowledge conversion process, uh, which talks about the implicit and the explicit values which are reflect reflected in the design and which is uh, follows the iterative principle, which again is based upon Thomas Kuhn's uh, process of scientific evaluation, which talks about recursive approach, uh, which says that with time, uh, even a, a planned intervention may lead to increasing entropy within the system. So again, what we were talking about uh, is uh, the different four levels, that is the uh, basic level of the awareness level, which is the most peripheral level. Then as we move up, we go to the functional application level, the expert level, and the highest level of competence, wherein which uh, needs some level of propositional knowledge. So as a pedagogy, design pedagogy that has to be taught in the college, uh, we can introduce the courses at these four levels of hierarchy wherein we, tr uh, we try to build up the knowledge so that by the time a student finishes his course, he can have the highest level of competence or the propositional knowledge which will uh, get him to an expert level or the highest level of competence.
Yes, yeah, so we just summarize in a minute and we are done. So what we are saying next is that, uh, next. yeah, so on the one hand, we are moving from the parts to the whole, you know, we, it's an evolving process. And on the, on the father hand, next, the priory, the whole, which is always latent and it's very active from inside. So this is something very interesting which can be explored. In effect, we are moving from a hierarchy of you know, various levels of design to some kind of a totality which we call a holarchy. You know, these are very interesting uh, premises of understanding which are coming up in the cybernetic approach of design, which is beyond the scope of this presentation. So the whole thing, next, can be proposed like this, is that we start with a ground reality which is uh, fed by instincts, then we move on to logic and reason, which is optimization. And if someone gets really creative from there, he moves on to the level of inspiration, which is based on imaginations, the variations, you know, the various paintings in the mental scape of creation. And from there, there is a possibility he or she reaches a meta state, which is the seat, which is right at the top. So in effect, we are defining the epistem and the ontological foundations of our entire systems approach of design. So on the one hand, we are centrifugal, we are optimizing. On the, other, on the other hand, we are centripetal, we are becoming creative. So these are some of the possible answers that we like to have. Yeah. Thank you. Well, thanks a lot, Joy. And uh, to be able to convert some of these uh, more abstract taxonomies into projects for students and faculty community, a couple of projects that we're thinking on working on through a consortium of IITs, SPAs, and IDs, and therefore opening out to everybody else who's around the table. Or one is Varanasi, which looks on a spatial site and then builds it up. And the other one would prob could probably be Ajanta, and she'll just have a proposal on that. And just to break too much